never flossed growing up. Would literally just brush my teeth for two minutes once every morning, and that was it. No floss, no anything else. Two years ago, started seeing and hearing shit, shadow people, voices telling me to do things, etc. Thought about seeing a doctor, but I couldn't afford it. Decided I was just stressed from school and stuff. Woke up one day with a major headache and pure rage enveloping every part of my body. Parents would ask if I was okay. Didn't talk to them because I was convinced that they were the ones causing my problems. Parents tried to talk to me one day, a week later, demanding to know why I was so upset now and said I need to see a doctor. Walked to the kitchen and grab a knife. Started swinging it around trying to kill my family. Dad managed to subdue me and put me in a headlock until I passed out. Woke up a few minutes later. Parents, nowhere to be seen. Started going ballistic and was banging on the doors and stuff. Parents called 911. Police and ambulance showed up. Was taken to the hospital and sedated. Remember waking up in the hospital a day later with cotton in my mouth. Doctors tell me I had an undiagnosed tooth infection. That had started to spread to my brain and was causing my episodes. But they managed to remove it and clean it up. Never had any more schizo moments after that. Ended up getting the other three teeth removed a while later. Make sure to floss and brush twice a day now. Are you brushing your teeth anons? That could be why you're seeing things no one else is. I saw a guy get murdered. Be me, walking back from store with a rack of beer. Not a care in the world. Walk past the park. The park has some low-level drug dealers, but it never felt unsafe. Hear car skid on its brakes. Guy jumps out of a minivan. Runs up the guy with gun drawn. Two shots to the head. Red mist, but not as much as I expected. The victim was talking to a woman in a pink jumpsuit, maybe about two feet away. The woman runs towards me. I see the deep purple blood that's inside the brain on her shirt. She's screaming and crying, but can't produce any actual words. I run and hide behind a car. When I hear the minivan skid off, I go home and crush a whole rack of beer and watch American Dad. I still dream of it occasionally. Little brother is really into astronomy. He's about seven years old. Likes to look at the stars and watch things. About three weeks ago, he spent literally the entire night looking at one part of space from his room. Never once moved. Didn't even eat. When he gets up about noon the next day, I asked him what he was looking at. I was looking at the screaming stars. What are you talking about, you little brat? There's a place I found where, if you look at it, you can hear screaming. No way. I'll prove it to you. Wait until about 11 at night. Telescope hasn't moved since the other night. Look into it. Hear very faint screams. Eventually, gets louder. Have to look away. I noped out and told our mom that she should take away his telescope. I'm never going to look at the stars the same way again. Be backpacker slash hiker. Go on solo expeditions all the time. Go to the Superior National Forest to hike on some trails and rough it in the woods. Hike is maybe a total of 40 miles. 8 miles a day for 5 days. Easy peasy. Trip is uneventful for the first 3 days. Normal comfy camping. On the way back, suddenly feel exhausted and dizzy. Immediately lay down by the side of the trail. Pass out. Wake up in the middle of fucking nowhere. Where the fuck is the trail? Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Try to calm myself down. I'm either north or south of the trail. I just need to reorient myself. I now realize that my pack is missing. Start to freak out again. Serious hyperventilation shit. Everything was on my pack. GPS locator, map, compass, shelter, even my fucking water. Sit down for about five minutes and calm myself. Trail can't be too far gone. Decide to travel both north and south for about an hour. Tried to use knife to mark trees, but ended up using a rock instead. 
Making noticeable marks was too tedious with my baby knife. Travel north for about half an hour. Nothing. No luck. There was a stream that was nearby, so I drank from the nasty water, since I was dehydrated as fuck. Backtrack and travel south. Get an eerie feeling like I'm being watched. Something isn't right. Pass by another stream and go to mark the largest tree. It is already marked. Oh, fuck that JPEG. Travel 20 to 30 feet further south. Another tree is marked. Realize that I have gone in a circle. But fucking how? The sun still rises in the east and sets in the west. It's not fucking possible. Sit down to ponder how I fucked this up. Finally, look up and see another human staring at me, maybe 50 feet away. Oh, thank God. They almost blended into the background with a dark complexion and earth tone clothing. I get up and start ambling toward them, asking for help. They fucking bolt away. I freak out and start chasing them. My savior was escaping. I run maybe 200 feet before I totally lose sight of them. I collapse on the ground and cry, fucking sobbing. The sun's about to set and I'm lost as fuck. I curl up into a ball and eventually pass out. Wake up later that night on dirt, not leaf litter. Can hardly see, but I can tell that this isn't just some pile of dirt, but it's a trail, an actual fucking trail. I cry again, never been so happy to be lying on a pile of dirt. Make an illegal as fuck campfire in the middle of the trail and wait until morning. Morning comes without incident and I quickly realize where I am based on trail markers. I am over 10 miles away from where I initially got lost somehow. Make my way back to where I parked and get the fuck out of there. I haven't gone camping by myself since. I never found my backpack either. Anyways, that's the only spooky story I have. So, I recently sold off some land rights to AT&T for towers. $6,500 a month for a tower. That money. So there's a construction crew chopping down some trees to make a dirt road to said tower location. It's not that bad. I get to keep all the trees for firewood and don't have to lift a finger. I started to notice the crews that they had there were dumping shit and throwing trash everywhere. Spoke to the supervisor, only to have him make it worse. Getting real tired of their shit, start plotting. Got a deer hanging in the garage, draining. Make their work trucks look like a horror movie. With a murder spree that went down. Blood trails, blood trails everywhere. Bloody handprints on truck doors like someone was trying to get in them. Took a sack of rocks and dragged them away from the trucks to look like someone was dragged through the dirt. Left all the unwanted deer parts in a bloody mess, about 100 feet from trucks. Get called by supervisor to come over. See my made up crime scene and throw up everywhere. Supervisor thinks an animal attacked and killed someone. Tell them that there isn't an animal big enough around here to do anything. Except a skinwalker. Explain I've been hunting it and I could hear it screaming at night. Supervisor wants to call cops. Say cops are in on it and we'll just say it's nothing. Sheriff is my neighbor. He could use a good laugh. He shows up and I explain everything. Starts telling them that it's nothing to worry about and probably just nothing. They panic and all want to leave. It's been almost three weeks and they haven't been back. Trucks are still here, all messed up. Tower contractor called and said that a new crew will be here starting Monday. Be in our early 90s, out doing World War II reenactment on the German side of Fauschemegers. Good day of firefights, driving around in a Kubel wagon while in firefights, and napping during firefights. Night falls, sitting around fire with Buddy. He was our machine gunner, and I was his loader. He's got a semi-auto converted MG42, because he has far too much time and money on his hands. I have a Carabiner 98K. Here, in a shitty German accent, 
Americana, 12 o'clock. American Airborne dude wanders out of the bushes in front of us. Quiet fucker. We didn't hear or notice him tramping through the brush. The actual reenactment ended long ago. Next engagement is tomorrow, so we don't light him up. He walks up to our campfire and sits down and says, this time with a standard Pacific Northwest accent, Tim, want to have a cigarette with me? My name is Dom, but close enough. Wait, why the hell is he addressing me by name? I've never seen this dude before. Must be a new guy. The other Americans probably named us. Yeah, ein moment. Produce cigarettes and matches. Hand a cigarette to him and one to my buddy. Strike a match and light my own. Then, pass matches around. The American dude is smoking hard, like taking a huge drag every second, practically shoving the cigarette into his face. He's done with it in like 30 seconds. Drops the butt on the ground, doesn't extinguish it. I figure it's a combination of him probably being drunk, like us, and the long marches. After we finish our smokes, the dude just sits there and stares at the fire silently for like five minutes. So, what's your name? Johan, you can call me John if you want. There's a guy on the American side named Johan who goes by John. Except, this isn't him. And I've known the other Johan for like three years at this point. Hell of a coincidence. Did you meet the other Johan? He just fucking smiles at us. Not even a smile, more like pulling his lips back like a growling dog. Hear a bunch of crashing at the brushes behind where Creepy John came from. American Airborne walks out of the bushes, visibly annoyed. Hey, asshole, would you fucking mind giving us back Tim's kit? That shit isn't cool, he's fucking freezing. It's 35 degrees out. Looks over to us. And why the hell didn't you turn him around as soon as he got back here? I told you guys to stop fucking letting teenagers into your group. Referring to an incident in which a drunk 16-year-old nearly burned down Airborne Number 2's tent. Drop German accents. We very rarely go out of character unless someone gets injured. Dude, we don't fucking know this guy. We thought he was one of yours. Creepy dude is mock reloading his rifle. Like moving his hand over to his bandolier, not actually pulling anything out, and putting the nothing into the breech of his M1 rifle. Does this like three times while we all just fucking stare at him. Suddenly, jolts upright. Starts laughing like crazy. More like an inhuman crackle. We all take a step back. Airborne number two and I unsling our rifles. While my buddy grabs his MG. Buddy shouts, Drop that rifle and get the fuck on the ground. We're calling the sheriff's department. We all think he's a fucking inbred axe murderer or something. Airborne number two is known for being a ballsy dude. Makes a grab for his rifle. Suddenly, he just isn't there. Scan right, scan left. He's six inches to my left, grinning at me. His mouth looks like it grew two inches wider. Eyes are all red, like all of his blood vessels just popped. Arms are hanging like six inches past the end of his uniform sleeves. Dive backwards on the ground and fire blank at him simultaneously. Flash blinds me for a fraction of a second. Work the bolt on my rifle furiously. About to fire another shot before, I realize, he's gone. We all scan. He's now in a bush, about 10 meters to our 130. All three of us light him up. At this point, the other six guys in our unit are out of their tents. What the fuck are you doing, you goddamn- What the hell is that? Dude is hunched over, heaving like he's about to throw up. Bolts back up, lets out a guttural scream says in what I can only compare to a mimicry of human speech. Everyone else scrambles for their guns and starts firing. Our sniper produces the 44 revolver he carries for bear defense, fires a live round at the fucking thing as it just stands there. It curls over from the impact, howls in pain, and dashes out into the bushes uphill to our right. We all march over, weapons raised, to check if there's any blood. No fucking blood. Our guy is adamant that he hit it. We search around in the bushes, and eventually, 
find the rifle and helmet it took from the real Tim. Find the bandolier torn off a little farther up, with a bullet hole in it. Guttural screaming from what sounds like maybe 30 meters away. We all fucking book it back to the campsite, just as the rest of the Americans are arriving. American sergeant walks up, fuming. Hey, thanks for fucking waking us up with all of your drunken bullshit. Actual Tim is there too, wrapped in a blanket and wearing someone's spare boots. Sergeant notices we're all pale as hell. Cools off a bit. You guys alright? You look a bit shaken up. Describe situation to him as MG Buddy breaks out his Motorola Microtac and calls 911. Wait for Sheriff to arrive. Form defensive perimeter and fix bayonets. We hear the sirens in the distance, sprint the full mile to where the road ends. Arrive with rifles slung and hands up. Three squad cars, five deputies, plus the sheriff step out. All are armed with shotguns. Get the feeling that this has happened before. They politely ask us to unsling and put down our weapons. We reluctantly comply. They tell us that they'll escort us up to our camps, but that we need to take down our tents, pack up, and get out of the area immediately. Sheriff explains as we walk that they get a few calls like this every year. The thing has never hurt anyone, yet. They've been trying to get the whole area closed off and clear a cut. Forest Service doesn't see shape-shifting murder demons as a good enough reason. Fuck the Forest Service. Get back to camp, pack up. Do the same at the American camp. Hear that same guttural scream, really fucking close. Sheriff and deputies start emptying shotguns towards the noise. Screams continue. We all book it back to the cars slash jeeps, hurl our gear into the cars, and screams are still coming closer. Start cars. As we're turning around, headlight beams illuminate the thing fucking standing in the middle of the trail, twitching. Deputies lean out of the car windows and fire the rest of their ammo at it, as we collectively get the hell out of Dodge. About two more miles down the road, Sheriff signals for us to pull over, explains the whole Wendigo legend to us, tells us, I'm not saying that's what you saw up there, but if I were you, I wouldn't go back there, even if you gave me a million dollars. Sagely advice. Me, Buddy, and our two other tagalongs stop in at a diner to get coffee and discuss. We can figure out no actual rational explanation. Americans lost about four to five hundred dollars worth of gear up there. Drive home is uneventful. Unable to sleep that night, though. Never return to that godforsaken place. We just continue reenacting elsewhere. I have a story. I don't think it's that scary, but just weird. Be 18. Be on school break. Mom goes to a conference for a week, so I'm home alone in my unit. Playing Vidya. Power goes on and off intermittently. This isn't an unusual thing. The electrical infrastructure in my area hasn't been updated since, like, the 60s. So, a bat hitting the power lines is enough to cause a one-minute blackout. During one of these blackouts, I go for a smoke and notice I'm the only house affected. Check fuse box. The mains had been manually switched off. The unit is tiny, doors locked, and no place for a killer to hide. So, I shrug it off and assume my fuse box is broken. Couldn't find on with night. 10 p.m. rolls around. Get phone call from mates, asking if they can come around and chill. 10.30 rolls around. Just as they arrive, power goes out. We go and smoke in backyard until power comes back on. My room has a window facing backyard. Friend checks to see if the light is still on. Black friend checks to see if light is still on. Is visibly frightened. Apparently, saw a face in the corner of the window. Two of my other friends call bullshit, but we investigate. Black guy stays outside while we go in and use our phone torches. Lights come back on as soon as we enter the house. Sit in room and drink and play Vidya. Next smoke break comes, so we all shuffle outside. Power out again. Go back in, and our empty cans are now stacked into a pyramid. Ended up throwing salt around the house while yelling lines from my mom's pocket Bible. This is the start of a couple weird events, so I shall continue. After salt throwing, we assume that the ghost is gone. 
stay up until 1 a.m. Power still goes out, but our cans don't get moved around while we smoke, so that's a plus. Go to bed and don't die or have weird dreams, so double plus. Two days later, same mates and some girls decide to do some skinny dipping at the local beach. Wait till night so we don't get caught. Goes well. Halfway back home, realize my wallet has fallen out of my pocket while stripping. Head back. The tide is in, so no hope of ever finding it again. Get home, have shower, towel off, and throw myself in bed. Feel a hard weight object under the sheets. It's my fucking wallet. Say, thank you, to my roof. Power blacks out for five seconds. Go to sleep. Day before mom gets back, Blackout Ghost has gone more or less quiet since the wallet incident. Playing Vidya and drinking by myself. When I hear a crash at my screen door. Go and check it out. Originally thought it was nothing due to it being night and dark. Hear rustling on doorstep. Shine light at rustling. And it's a fucking crow just staring back at me. Starts tapping on door like it's a goddamn Mormon wanting to tell me about Jesus. Worried my dog might hear it and eat it, so I let it in. Doesn't fly in, just hops up the step and wanders around my house for 15 minutes before making itself at home on my kitchen bench. Read somewhere that they like bread soaked in milk, so I get a plate and make some. Leave the crow and bread on the kitchen bench and go back to my room and play Vidya. After a while, bird comes into my room and watches. It's about 2 a.m., so I tell the bird that I'm tired and I'm gonna go to bed, so I'll let it out. Open the door for the bird and watch it hop along and then take off into the darkness. Never had a blackout as weird as that week since. That crow was a bro. Work in a big 30 floor office building on the 13th floor. I come in just before 6 a.m. each morning. Know the security guard, Alex, who works overnights from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. Staying late one night due to an important assignment that needs to be done ASAP. It's 9 p.m., tired after a 15 hour day. Go to take a piss before I wrap stuff up. Go to bathroom. Hear some weird sound in a stall like groaning. You okay there, buddy? Sound stops. Whatever. Take my piss and go back to my office. Office has your generic wooden door in the hallway. But we have a biometric glass door inside past the wooden doors. Go and pack my stuff up. Think I hear someone trying to open the glass door. Nah, that can't be. Security and the cleaners have access cards. Then... I hear the distinct tapping on glass sound. Slowly walk to the door. In between the taps, I can hear the same groaning from the bathroom. Too much of a pussy to peek around the corner to see who's at the glass door. There's a back exit to the hallway, so... There's a back exit to the hallway, but I don't want to wait around at the elevators with the possibility of whoever is at the door hearing me. The two main staircases are also out in the hallway but we have access to the building's internal staircase from my office. Take it down to the lobby. Alex is there. Explain the situation. I'll check it out, Anon. Come in right before 6 a.m. the next day, as usual. Going to ask Alex what he found. Alex isn't there. It's another security guard at the desk. Ask, where's Alex? Alex called during his shift and said that he's quitting and leaving immediately. I'm not sure I want to know what he saw that spooked him enough to quit on the spot, but I don't stay at work that late anymore. Thought I'd might as well share my story. Bit of background info on my house. It's pretty big and we have a large yard too with lots of animals and a pool. And four ponds, two in the front yard and two in the backyard. Be about nine to ten years old, going to see our grandma. Can't leave animals home to starve to death, so we hire a lady to homesit. She has two kids, three and four years old, both of which can't swim yet. Lady calls up my mom one night and asks if our house is haunted, or if we ever notice anything strange. We have, sort of. Mom tells her about our old lady ghost. Lady starts freaking out. Tells my mom that her daughter got out and managed to make her way into the pond. She woke up to hear lots of splashing, so she runs out and asks the kid how she got out, and the kid just goes, the old lady helped me out. 
the kid's mom is confused and is like, what the fuck, what old lady? And the kid starts going on about how there's this old lady that lives in a house with us. Mom's like, shit, hi. But yeah, this old lady ghost is like constantly walking around upstairs when everyone is downstairs and the dogs are locked out. And we'll randomly hear like someone having a shower and humming. Nothing ever really super spooky, but yeah. Another story. Be me, four years old. Sleeping in my dad's room because I'm young and I like the company. Wake up about 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Walk down hallway to chuck a piss. See, a girl-like figure, probably same height as OP, standing in front of me with her arms bowed. Nope the fuck out of there, screaming. Dad wakes up, asks me what happened. And to this day, I'm not sure if I was just like half awake and being a kid with a good imagination, or if it did actually happen. But it was fucking spooky, and I can only remember it vaguely being so young. This is some OC that I just posted on K. Enjoy. My grandfather on my father's side died shortly before Christmas of 2012. He was a hunter, a woodsman, and also a brilliant mathematician. Me, my father, and my siblings went north for the funeral and Christmas celebrations. Me, my brother, my father, and my uncle carried my grandfather to the grave on a beautiful winter day. This winter was very cold and the temperature would crawl down to negative 30 Celsius. A few days later, one of my older cousins had a party at her house. We sat around talking about family, memories, and related stuff that comes up around funerals. And my cousin tells me this story about her father. Her father was married to my aunt. He was a Swedish mountain ranger and a veteran from several conflicts, including but not limited to Kosovo. Needless to say, he was a really tough guy. My grandparents had a small house far out in the woods. I spent many summers there as a child. This happened many years ago in the 80s or 90s. There was an old tree, a huge pine, the kind that seems to have elbowed out every other tree and created a small opening in the forest for itself. It was also dead and it was time to take it down. This was a beautiful summer day and my uncle went out in the middle of the day with a chainsaw and ax. He went out alone and he came back a few hours later. When he came back, he was clearly upset but didn't want to talk about it. My aunt asked what was wrong and, eventually, he told her what happened in the woods. He took his car out on a small road, got out, and started walking to this old tree. The tree stood alone in a small clearing. Just as he got there and was about to start his chainsaw, something felt weird, like something was watching him. As he got closer to the tree, the sky darkened. He had never seen the sky get dark so fast before. It was almost like in a cartoon. He felt uneasy and cold, despite it being a warm summer day. As he looks around, he sees someone standing back about 30 feet away. Pick related, it's a naked woman, but she has black hair. Looks straight into his eyes. He just nopes the fuck out takes his axe and chainsaw and walks away, doesn't look back, walks to the car and goes straight home. The thing that scares me about this is the fact that my uncle is not the kind of guy who would make this shit up. He didn't want to talk about it and he didn't want to believe what he saw. Also, it's pretty obvious who she was. Skolksara, the forest lady. She is a very old evil spirit who lives in Scandinavian forests and takes the form of a beautiful young woman with long hair that covers a huge, rotting hole in her back. She lures men who get lost in the woods, and then eats them. I don't know how true this story is, but the fact that everyone involved really wanted it to be bullshit really sends a chill up my spine. 